All right, well, it's time to get a little bit more insight as to what's going on with the Phillies. So with that, we're going to welcome in our PHOI contributor, Jim Salisbury. Nice to have you here, Jim. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Renee. How you doing, Jamie? Renee, great to be with you guys. <laughs> Nice to have you here. Like We've been talking a lot about the offensive struggles, Jim. Let's just jump right in because it's been very frustrating, of course, to see the Phillies' lack of production. They are sitting in their 17 games, um, their best 17 games start in five years. So that's for perspective, everybody. They are over 500. They are in their best start in five years. But eight games that they've had three or less runs scored. What are your thoughts on their slow start offensively? The pitching's been great, but we haven't seen the production like we want with the runs. Yeah, um, it's certainly, I think everything is magnified earlier, early in the season. Um, and we've seen this team in snippets in the last handful of years have periods when they go dry offensively. And, you know, they haven't won out of the gate. And I think there's probably a lot of reasons for it. Um, I think the at-bats were a little down number-wise in spring training because some guys had the flu. Uh, and they got them kind of off their feet and away from the action. Um, weather's had something to do with it. And some of it's just it's baseball. Um, they did stress a lot in spring training uh, um, about, you know, minimizing chasing pitches out of the zone. It was a constant theme. Um, obviously, we saw what happened when they chased a lot in game six and seven of the NLCS. And I think... Um, I don't think it was limited to just that, though. That It was a problem during the season at times. So you stress that all winter. You hear about it all winter. You talk about it all spring. And then it, it's on your mind a lot as hitters. And I think some of the guys have talked about this. They've been so conscious of chasing that it's created some defensive swings and, and you know, produced um, less than quality at bats, um, produced uh, a slugging percentage, uh, that is anemic. Uh, even Rob Thompson has kind of validated this idea, saying that, you know, they talked about it a lot. He thinks it's on guys' minds. I do think as things evolve here, as the weather gets a little bit better, because, you know, you don't have to have perfect weather to play baseball, but some of the weather they've had has been awful. Um, that said, Bryce Harper had three, three home runs in awful weather. So it's baseball. Don't figure it out. I do believe in the track records. I do think this is a team that's built to hit, built to score runs. Um, fourth in the league last year, runs scored. I think they're going to get back in that area. And I think the offense is eventually going to be fine. Um, slow start. You are a game over 500 after 17, given some of the slow starts in past years given some of the slow starts in the batter's box, I would certainly take that. Um, I do think they're going to hit. Um, like I said, I think this is at times over the last handful of years, we've seen the struggle with runners in scoring position. We've seen the struggle to score runs. It happens. It happens to this team. There's swing and miss. There's strikeouts. Guys go cold. They have a lot of streaky guys. Uh, I think eventually some of these guys will put it together. You know, you get three guys hot in your lineup and another two guys starting to warm and you got something special. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really not worried of, about the slow start with the bats. Um, if it wasn't there with the pitching you've gotten, they'd have a better record. But I know in Philadelphia, we especially hate to hear this, but I will say it. It's early. <laughs> Yeah, Jim, it's always important how you end the year, not how you start the year. But what do you, you've been around this team uh, a long, long time, and it seems like regardless of the players on the roster, who the manager is, who the hitting coach is, they just seem to start slow. Does anything about that make sense to you, or is it just baseball being a weird sport and sometimes it takes a little while to get going? Yeah, I think – you know, there are guys who start quick, uh, but some of your top guys on this team have started slow in recent years. Uh, I, mean, I think the big example is, you know, Kyle Schwarber. But then June comes and he's a madman. So, um, like I said, I, I think it'll happen. I don't I can't put my finger on it. You know, I think guys used to get more at bats in spring training. Um, I think, you know, though it's not classic load management. I do think organizations watch um, playing time in spring training um, so guys are preserved for the long haul. Um, 
I understand it, but I think that can lead to some slow starts. I think the weather can lead to some, some slow starts. And I think every season is different. Some, some year a guy gets off to a hot start, some years he, he struggles. Uh, but when you hold it up at the end, that 162, those 162 games, they mean something. Track record means something. The cliche about the back of the baseball card, you know, means something. Harper's going to be right where he needs to be. Schwarber's going to be right where he needs to be. Castellanos is going to be right where he needs to be. He's, you know, he's a guy who struggled for extra base hits right now, but he's had he's a streaky guy. And at some point, I think he's going to hit a good streak. And he's going to be standing on second base, pumping his fist at the dugout, and the crowd's going to be going um crazy and he's gonna you know have you know 30 doubles or something so uh not overly worried but hey if this is a month from now our conversation might be different yeah and jim as you're <clears throat> touching on some of the different guys performances so far let's go a little bit deeper into talking about them starting with kyle schwarber who's been one of the positive so let's go on the positive side there his chase rates is one of the lowest of his career his overall first pitch swing rate his numbers even his ability to get on base has improved tremendously especially against left-handed pitchers you know mm. kyle who looks slimmer looks like he's toned down a bit uh and definitely moving faster of course, he's even mentioned his knee has been feeling much better. What do you take from his start to the season? Because he's one that traditionally starts slower, yet this year we're actually getting him much better, in, especially in his role as leadoff and just how he's been able to kickstart the season in a pretty strong way. Sure. Um, you know, he's always a focal point because he's a leadoff guy and he's an unconventional leadoff guy, but they win ball games when he leads off. I mean, that's what matters most. Um, I think you're right saying he looks to be uh, – a little trimmer, maybe in a little better shape. I think that'll help his knees. And I think one of the big things I saw, you know, watching him swing the bat uh, in spring training and here in the early season, uh, maybe not so pull happy, you know, kind of, you know, using the middle of the field, um, gap to gap. And I think that's just going to create a, a better hitter. I mean, if, if, if Kyle Schwarber, you know, obviously last year he, he barely hits 200. If, if he could hit like 235, um, you'd have that much more contact. And I, I, I think his power numbers would even be better um, and his production would be, be even better. So um, he, I, I do believe he's off to a, a good start and a, and a positive start. And I just like the way he's swinging it and, and kind of using the middle of the field. And, uh, boy, he's been a great, great signing here. I know we focus on the 200 batting average and the strikeouts. Um, that's in a lot of ways – what the game brings you in, in, with a lot of players these days, but man, his production is, is um, has been really, you know, huge for this team. The power numbers and the RBIs he gives you and the on-base percentage. I think we forget they didn't go to the postseason for a decade before he got here. Uh, they struggled to find a consistent leadoff man for a decade before he got here. I, I know it's unusual and it's unorthodox, but they've entered the postseason twice. They've won, won a lot of ball games. With there, he signed for two more years, and I expect two more good years out of him here. And he's off to a nice start. Yeah, he's a, a tremendous leader. You can see the way the young guys really look tremendous. up to him there. Mm -hmm. Tremendous. Um, yeah. I, I, so, so one of the I, best I've one of the best I've seen. Um, I covered Dalton. He was a great leader. Um, I mean, there's been a ton of great leaders, uh, but the thing with a great leader, you don't try to be a leader. You are a leader. And right. you know, Dalton never tried to be a leader. He evolved into a leader. Uh, Kyle right doesn't, yeah. to, to me, Kyle doesn't try to lead. Uh, he just leads uh, with his personality, very inclusive, um, you know, has time for everybody in that clubhouse. Uh, after, you know, a defeat or even after a win, he's the guy, a lot of guys will gravitate around and, you know, talk about the game, rehash the game. That's great for developing your baseball IQ. Uh, that's great for developing camaraderie. Comes very natural to him. Um, and he's really, really good at it. And uh, I look at him as uh, sort of a total package addition to this team two years ago. Yeah, I Jim, that. I think, uh, you know, there's a couple positives with this team. This, this The starting rotation team ERA and strikeout numbers are phenomenal. But the thing that really makes me feel good about the, the direction of the Phillies for the next couple years is Dombrowski, Fold, and Mattingly have shown, along with their front office people, a great ability to kind of capitalize on some bullpen arms uh, guys that throw gas out there for not much. I mean, Hoffman, Alvarado, uh, Marte, like they're finding some gems in the rough here. 
Do you think this is something that if Dave Dombrowski flees to Nashville in a couple of years to start the <laughs> expansion team, that Fold and Mattingly and the rest of the staff can kind of absorb and maintain? Because th that is a tremendous skill to have as a front office. Yeah, I would. I don't see why not. I mean, you know, Sam Fold and Preston Mattingly are really smart guys. Um, I mean, Sam Fold played in the major leagues. He uh, is a graduate of Stanford. Um, he's been pursued by other organizations um, for positions. Uh, he's a really bright guy, and who better to mentor under than Dave Dombrowski? Yeah, I, I think. I, I think you know they'll continue to have those qualities. So much of it is these days. I mean, we see the way bullpens are kind of up and down. They're volatile. They're mercurial. Um, the one constant I see is organizations will always take a shot on a reliever, even when he's failed or hasn't put it together in two or three different spots. You might be the fourth spot. You might be the place he puts it together. Um, and they'll always roll the dice on stuff, you know, velocity, great movement, a great hook, so, you know, that one great pitch in the bullpen where you might only need one great pitch and another pretty good one. So uh, you mentioned some names that have excellent pickups. I mean, Alvarado, his first year here, I thought he's really struggled with his command, uh, but he's really, you know, put it together. The addition of that cutter has given him a lot of confidence. I mean, Hoffman was a waiver um claim it like a year ago hell of a pickup there's a lot there so i i think with bullpens always take a shot on the stuff always take a shot on the arm uh always take a shot that a new voice uh, some new coaching might be the thing that unlocks them always take a shot in the fact that it's a volatile mercurial position and you might be just you know one day away from it clicking for you for a year um so they they've built a good bullpen. Uh, they had a good bullpen last year, uh, and they you know appear to have built another good one here. That said, you mentioned Dombrowski. He didn't come here in his mid 60s not to win. Um, he works for an owner who wants to win. If he sees a a fault out there, a hole out there, he's going to address it in July. Um, they're going to go out there, and you know I, I I think that's an area that he'll have his antennae up uh, about potentially improving even if it's a strength uh, but you know it has a chance to even get a little bit better now with Kirkering coming back homegrown guy great stuff um, working to get better adding a two-seamer to that uh, power repertoire with the uh, fastball slider um, so um, you know some some good things are, are happening out there yeah yeah we've been talking about it you know so much about how one of the big positives is absolutely the pitching as a whole because as you mentioned, the, the at-bats, the runs, that's something that can click later. But you don't want to have your starting pitching and definitely even your bullpen arms come out and start the season off very flat. And so far, that's been a positive. But one other thing I want to hit on, Jim, the last thing for me before we let you go, on a lighter note, it is the 60th anniversary today for Wawa. <laughs> Um, word on the street is you're a huge Wawa guy. Oh, yeah. Are you headed to Wawa today? And if so, what Free are you, coffee, what are you getting? <laughs> well, I can answer that question quite succinctly. I head to Wawa every day, so I will eventually get there. I don't drive by one without uh, jumping in there and grabbing a coffee or a snack. So yes, I am a, I am a, I am a Wawa fan and occasionally my waistline shows that, um, you know, when I, drive home from the ballpark late at night all those years. Uh, I would always pass three Wawa's <laughs> and I would always stop at one. And on some nights I'd stop at two. And then when there was construction on 322, I'd have to go to the blue route. And all of a sudden my three Wawa's turned into six Wawa's. I'd pass six <laughs> Wawa's quite literally. And, um, you know, I would hit them, but I always hit them on the way into the ballpark. So uh, congratulations, 60 years. That's a long time, boy. I'll have to get in there and, and, and get my free coffee today. Absolutely. Jim, last one for me has to do with uh, perhaps my favorite Philly, uh, and he's taking the mound tonight, Ranger Suarez. Um, this guy just answers the bell all the time in big game spots, bullpen, starter, whatever. What do you think his like realistic ceiling kind of is? I think on some teams he could possibly be a two, uh, but here with the Phillies, obviously he's got two great pitchers ahead of him. How good can Ranger Suarez be? Yeah, I don't pay a lot of attention to the number thing because we talk about number ones, and I think it can be overstated. I think there's very few number ones in the game, very few aces. But, you know, 
what matters is you're a good pitcher and you keep your team in the game that day. I mean, I, I hear people say Aaron Nola is a two or two and a half or a three on some days. Who cares? All I know is he's a darn good pitcher. And last night he pitched like a number one. Uh, Ranger Suarez, what's his ceiling? An all-star. All-star. A uh, guy could, you know, get to 200 innings. Um, maybe the best is yet to come. You know, he was kind of that slow and steady guy uh, that continues to put it together. He's found good health. Um, and, you know, he, he's a location guy. He, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Cliff Lee in terms of his demeanor. Get the ball, throw the ball. Nothing phases him. Doesn't matter what role he pitches. And if you remember a couple of years ago, he pitched in like three different roles, right? He was a closer. He was a long man. And then he was a, one of their best starters. So uh, I don't care if he's a number three. Tonight he has the capability to go out there and be a number one. He's that good. When he's hitting his spots, he's throwing his changeup, getting it into right-handers on their hands occasionally, working it away with that changeup. Um, he's a really good pitcher, a real Phillies success story. They signed him out of Venezuela, uh, Sal Gustinelli and his crew for $25,000. I mean, you look at the numbers that some of these young pitchers are getting either in the you know domestic draft or, or in the free agency in free agency in Latin America. This is a guy that was a soccer player uh, and a baseball player, a great athlete, wanted a chance to pitch, and boom, slowly but steady, climbs the ladder, gets seems to get better every year. Um, great intangibles in terms of poise, in terms of executing, in terms of location. You know the, the ice water in his veins cliche. Um, Heck of a pitcher. Uh, you might you might see the best year of his career this year. Love it. Ooh, I would love that. Well, yeah, Ricky Vitalico says yeah. uh, Cy Young candidate. He's been why not? Some... I mean, why not? You know how you win a Cy Young? You pitch yes. good. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and he's capable of pitching good. Yeah. And you do it consistently. Every fifth day, you go out there, you keep your team in the game, you pitch well. Um He's got all the all the uh, all the uh, ingredients to be a very good major league starting pitcher. He already is. Yeah, awesome. definitely, definitely. And everybody loves Ranger. I know in the chat they're talking about how adorable he is and how he's <laughs> Mr. Smooth Operator. But he's <laughs> uh, and he's as good a guy as as you would think by looking at him. He's just a really good, um, uh, easygoing, easy smile. Um, I did a story a few years ago on him, and you know his family's back home in, in um, Venezuela and the whole family comes to his house when he pitches and they have a, a party. Every time he pitches, they watch the game on TV. So um, yeah, he's, he's, he's an awfully, he's a good one, but you know, still the weather's getting better. They need to start hitting because hand in hand with, you know, pitching um, you, you know, your pitcher is out there trying to prevent runs. You got to score him some runs. Uh, they're owned for with Zach Wheeler on the mound. Runs yeah. produced. Can't be them, that man. way with you with your ace. You got to get Rangers some runs. I mean, extra base hits have been very difficult to come by for this team. Uh, it would be nice if they racked up a racked up a few tonight, so it's not you know um, life and death in the eighth and ninth inning like it was last night, and uh, put some runs on the board and, and let Ranger cruise a little bit. Yeah, got to support your pitchers, especially when they're playing so well. So, Jim, we appreciate you so much for taking time to join us, to weigh in. Go enjoy some Wawa and the rest of your I'm Tuesday. Going. Go get your free coffee, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm going to Wawa right now. I might, go, even get some, I might even get some turkey pinwheels. <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. Living on the edge. I love it. Enjoy. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon, Jim. Yes, talk to you very soon. See you, guys. Thanks. See you, See ya.